Welcome to this Wise Out tutorial in Microsoft Power Apps. In this first part of the series, we will create an environment and discuss the prerequisites of creating your first app. First, we will look at the differences between the free and paid licenses in Power Apps. Then, examine the difference between the Teams or browser application. We will look at how to apply for a developer workspace and why this is useful, discuss the different types of apps that are available, and finish with examining the Power Apps layout. Let's begin. The first thing we have to decide is what plan we require. Thankfully for this course, there is a Power Apps developer plan, which is completely free and can be applied for within a couple of minutes. The downside of the developer plan though, is it's exactly that, for development, not for active use. It gets throttled based on how many times you're running these, however it does have a very generous allotment. In terms of paid versions, the one that Microsoft will push you towards is Power Apps Premium. This allows a user to create as many apps as required and use as many apps as they need. There are, however, two older methods. Power Apps Per App allows you to pay for each app, $5 per user per app per month. This is useful if each user only requires a couple of apps. Power Apps Pay As You Go, which is allowed through Azure subscriptions. If you're not using Azure, then this option will not be for you. How do we decide though between needing a free license or require a paid license. Any Microsoft 365 accounts come with a standard Power Apps license. This allows you to use any of the standard tier connectors. Standard connectors include lots of Microsoft connectors as well as third party. From this page link below, you can filter using standard or premium connectors. Premium connectors will require you to have a premium license for Power Automate and it will require your user to have a premium license for Power Automate. Very handily you can also filter by publisher so I'm going to filter to just Microsoft. An easy rule of thumb to follow is your free connectors are anything in the Microsoft 365 biome. This includes things like approvals, Outlook, Excel. It does not include things like on-site connectors, that would be your SQL database or your Azure database. Premium connectors are marked with this little diamond symbol. If you're unsure when setting up a new connector inside of an app, you can filter to premium or standard connectors. And we'll see this later. The first decision that we're gonna to have to make is whether or not we want to use the browser application or if we want to use the Teams application. The Teams application can only be used inside of the Teams environment, previously known as the Oakley project. One advantage of using the Teams Power Apps application is that you can create tables in the Dataverse included for free. Think of the Dataverse like Excel in the cloud, but it allows you to have relations between those tables. Sadly, for the browser version, the Dataverse is not included for free and will require additional licensing if you decide to go down that route. For this course, we will use the browser version. To continue with the browser version, we will first need to apply for a developer environment. I'm currently inside of the YSL Courses environment. To apply for a developer environment, all we need to do is give a search. Choose the first option in the list. Power Apps Developer Plan, start free and enter the email address you wish to use.
After a couple of minutes, your new plan will be added. The advantage of using the developer plan is we have access to all the premium connectors for free. However, we will have a message throughout warning that this is a developer plan and premium connectors will require a paid license when we want to share the application with others. Microsoft have made it very easy to move an application from the developer environment to a live environment when ready. The final thing we'll need to decide is which type of app we need. There are three main app types. Power Apps model driven apps are very structured and are based on the Dataverse database. We would need to use external connectors to feed into Microsoft's Dataverse to power these types of apps. These are excellent when you have rigid structure in mind and want consistency across your forms. Power Apps Canvas is more freeform, allows us to use a variety of different connectors and plan our app accordingly. The final type is Power Pages, previously known as Power Portals. These are a separate application. They have their own tailored studio and they allow you to make websites for external uses. So this is the type of app that I would use if I wanted to work with my clients and customers. The other two are aimed at using within your organization. So I would be able to share with anyone at Wisel Courses, whereas the Power Pages would be able to share with anyone. For this course, we'll be covering Power Apps Canvas Apps. Once you've created your environment, we have several options available. Home takes us to the main page of Power Apps, which lists out all of our applications shared with us. Create starts letting us make our new report. Learn has links to external and internal tutorials on how to make the best out of Power Apps. Apps is the page I'm currently on. This allows us to see our apps, including those shared with me. Tables allows us to see our tables in the Dataverse. Flows allows us to connect to Power Automate. For example, I could have a button that when clicked sends an email with the data on the current application to another user. Solutions allows us to pack multiple items together. You'll want to use a solution if you're using a Power Apps data model. Connections lists out all of the data connectors we'll be using, such as OneDrive, Excel for Business, and more. Speaking of more, there are lots of other items. We will not be using any of these for this course. Thank you for joining me on this Wiseau tutorial. In the next video, we will have a look at how to create your first app using data.